is is due to Allah, we praise Him, we seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. This ummah of Islam occupies a high position in the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to the Arabs, they were the most decadent nation on earth. They were the lowest nation on earth. They killed one another, they robbed one another, they cut the relations of the wombs, they transgressed against one another. They were highway bandits. But when Islam came to them, they became the torch carriers. They brought civilization to the rest of the world and they changed history. They created future, they made it with their own hands, with their own works, with their own actions. And at their time, at that specific time, history took a turn that changed the future of humanity forever. But how did the Prophet ﷺ transform this ummah? What was the secret behind this great transformation that has no parallel whatsoever in history? What was the secret to that? It's not a secret anyway, because we find it there in the Quran, in the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But don't we have the same thing today? Don't we have the Quran? Don't we have the Sunnah? We have them. Both of them are with us. The Quran is intact as Allah promised to protect it. And the Sunnah is there through the great efforts of the great scholars of Islam. So we have these two secrets to civilization, to greatness, to the apex of human existence. We have the means to that. We have the secret, we have the formula for that. But what is the difference between us and the companions? The book is the same, the sunnah is the same, but the people are not the same. They were real men. They were real Muslims who lived for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sacrificed for His sake everything they had. But the good news is that at any time it is possible to duplicate the same experience of the Prophet ﷺ. Not necessarily to the same high level, but at least we can duplicate the main part of his mission. And we can revive this ummah, we can bring it back to glory, we can bring it back to honor. So what is the secret of great Muslims? What is the secret of great individuals who can make history, or who can make the future, and write history with their own actions? It is high aspiration. It is al-himma, al-himma al-aliyah, that shakes mountains, that can ch change the whole universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us that power. He enabled us. He gave us the potential to be able to create and to change and to transform this world. And we are supposed to do that. So the secret to the great position of this ummah that Allah wanted it to be is high aspiration. Great, lofty, noble ambitions that do not settle for average ambitions of human beings, that do not settle for carnal desires, that does not settle for personal ambitions. It's high aspiration that changes the world. And look at yourself today, where do you stand? Nothing brought you to where you are today except your ambitions and your aspirations. If high, then you will be high. But if low, you will always be low. Don't blame circumstances. Don't blame conditions. Don't blame others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the power to choose our response to our conditions. The conditions of the companions were far greater, more difficult, harsher than the conditions we're going through today. We're living in a state of luxury, although the ummah is in a state of humiliation. So divorce, blame, three times. Ba'in, baynuna, kubra. 
Divorce it three times and never come back to it. Use the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gave you. You can change the face of this earth. We can help humanity. We can open their eyes to the truth. So you can always reach the apex of human civilization, human existence, human behavior. You can always reach that if once you decide to do it. That was exactly the experience of the Prophet ﷺ with his companions. I would ask you brothers, brothers to come forward a bit if you can squeeze up a little bit just to let the brothers find space at the back. So the Prophet ﷺ, especially at the early days of da'wah, was working hard to build individuals with high aspirations. When Al-Khabbab ibn al-Arat came to the Prophet ﷺ, what happened to Al-Khabbab ibn al-Arat? He was taken by the Muslims and they set up fire for him. They put his back on the fire and they started jumping on his chest. And he said, Wallahi, nothing put the fire out except the, the grease and the fat of my back melting on it. They used to bring the pebbles, the soft pebbles and heat them until they turned red. Then they would force him to sleep on these pebbles. And he never recanted Islam. He never gave up Islam. But one day he came to the Prophet ﷺ when he was in the shade of the Kaaba. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, Ala tastansiru lana, Ala tabi'u Allah lana. Why did you call upon Allah to help us? You can see we're going through so many trials. What did the Prophet ﷺ say to him? Because he understood the making of nations, the making of the future, the making of glory. The Prophet ﷺ understood that process very well. What did the Messenger ﷺ say to him? He reminded him of the examples of the nations that came before. That one of them used to be, they used to sow someone and split him, split him into two pieces. They used to comb their bodies with combs of iron, splitting their nerves and their flesh from their bones, and they would never give up their religion. So the Prophet ﷺ told his companions, hold on to the high aspirations, hold on to your ambitions, don't settle for compromise, even if the challenge is great. You can always do it. Allah puts the potential inside of you once you hold on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hold on to the rope of Allah and you can face any, fo any force on this earth. Actually, there is no force on earth that can stand in the face of a Muslim once they hold on to the rope of Allah. This was the case of all our great generations, the early generations, the Salaf, our predecessors. This is 